uh, we have today uh, Surat at takathur Surah number 102. Uh, it's coming after Surat Al-Qari'ah. Surat Al-Qari'ah, as uh, if you remember from uh, our last time, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was describing the day of judgments and um, the day of uh, resurrection and uh, the ahwal of Yawm Al-Qiyamah uh, with a very, uh, very uh, strong words uh, explaining to the human beings how this is uh, something that we should work for. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started this surah. It is a very short surah, surah At-Takathur. And the surah has three times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say the word kalla, uh, no. And kalla in the Quran is, is mentioned as a, a zaj, like, a, like a, you don't get it right. It is a kind of suppressing uh, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, 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 the, and the surah will, will explain why, why that tone of the surah is very strong. It, it even with that only eight ayahs, it has three qasam, three uh, swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, confirming that uh, strong um, tone of, of anger from the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak about them. Alhaakum uh, at takathur. Need one second here. We resume here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that starting this with Alhaakum at takathur. Alhaakum, the, the word laha. Uh, in Arabic uh, is to get distracted uh, and uh, we'll explain more about this word but I want to explain here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a plural form the plural form means here that it is a majority of mankind would uh, indulge in that act you have been busy with something that you are not supposed to be busy with um, um, the the um, the words al um, is um, is used exchangeably with uh, or the lahu is used exchangeably with lahu and lahu wa lahu al lahu wa lahu both are um, uh, two words that describe person who is something that is of less importance. Uh, let me try to explain it more uh, about the um, uh, in the Arabic language. Um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Luqman, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ and the Mufassirin would say about that is, is uh, uh, more of a music or, uh, or a singing or something. Uh, the, those who, uh, who uh, would, uh, would waste their time listening to, to music. Um, so the lahu uh, as description in Arabic This is something that will, will, will take your time and it is uh, useless. But al-la'ib from yalab, which is play in English, uh, uh, and it is uh, the opposite of al-jad, seriousness, or be, do, in, involve in something serious. Uh, in Arabic, the definition of al-la'ib huwa an ya'malu al-insani amalan la nafa fi wa la fa'idha. So they are very close meaning, but um, the mufassirin, because it comes in the Quran sometimes together, they, 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 they differentiated between them, saying, Those who do something that they are not supposed to do or not the best thing for them to do, that is lahu. 
but lab is something to enjoy something that of uselessness something that is not you are not supposed to do you are not ordered to do so that that would be a difference between uh, and uh, going back to the the uh, the meanings in the surah um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that you are striving for something that would distract you or uh, you are uh, trying to or you are gaining more interest in something that is not you are supposed to do. at takathur at takathur in, in, in Arabic is gaining something. Uh, you get more of something. And this can be more of money, which is most of the Mufassirin would say that is the, 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 the closest meaning to the, 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 the reality. But it also can be collecting not only more money uh, and wealth, but also getting more uh, kids or getting more power uh, that is something, whatever something that makes you uh, get uh, and, and burning your time in a direction that you are not supposed to. And again, as a reminder, we, are, we just finished a few surahs that speaking about the day after. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to us the people who will not be careful and understand what they expect, what they should expect in the hereafter and how difficult and tough that day gonna be on every human being, then you are just doing something wrong. You are not using your uh, time and efforts in the right direction. Al-Hakum al-Takathur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say you get busy, but he say lahu. So, it is showing us that the takathur, gaining more money or getting more kids, getting more power, even getting more knowledge for the sake of uh, bragging about the knowledge or something that is not, uh, you are not gaining it with the intention of benefit yourself in the hereafter. That is also something that one should avoid. Uh, anything that you exert efforts that with, with a, 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 a uh, meaningless uh, effect on your akhirah that will be under what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us from alhaakum al-takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir till you visited the graveyards and, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, 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 is saying that zurtum uh, visited not you end up there. Um, uh, and, and one of uh, Al Arab, when he listened to this, uh, when he listened to this verse, he said, Wallahi la yub'athun. So that is a, a clear sign that there is going to be a ba'ath, resurrection, because it is just a visit. If you are going to Al Maqabr, or means and you are in the graveyard referring to the death then it, it means you are not going to stay there forever. Visit, it means something temporary, even long or short, but it's gonna come to an end. So they learn it from it, that is a sign of, uh, or an indication for the, uh, the resurrection. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in, in the first ayah, when he say, Al-Hakum al-Takathur, uh, it is like Hadith Qudusi, the saying, Shagalakum Hubbu Dunya. The love of the dunya has consumed you. So, this is, uh, uh, this is something that you are 
using your time and you yatamada bikum you are going more and more into this without even uh, uh, remembering the hereafter uh, in sahih al bukhari uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned uh, that لو كان لابن آدم واد من ذهب so if ابن آدم has uh, an entire uh, wadi of gold he will ask for more you imagine that someone who is poor and he is asking for maybe a, a, a few uh, uh, pieces of gold so he can start his new trade or something and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for him all his trade and he became an entire wadi of dhahab of gold he will ask for more and that is that is a, a human nature that we should control And in another hadith uh, narrated uh, or reported by Imam Ahmad, uh, that uh, Ibn Adam would say, Mali, Mali, my money, my wealth. And, uh, uh, and the Prophet say, Wahallaka min malika, illa ma akalta fa afnait, aw labista fa ablait, aw tasaddaqta fa amdait. So there is only three ways your money can go. This is an authentic hadith that's mentioned by Sunan al-Imam Ahmad and it is also narrated in uh, Sahih al-Imam Muslim saying Ibn Adam would say my money, my money uh, that is uh, indicating to uh, one who is transition going to a death now he say my money like I, I made something so uh, I wanted to help me now but the prophet explaining to us that the money will go either one of three things you have from your money you used it either you eat something and just going to waste you you buy some clothes till it is it is gone this is the third one that is useful, which is what you spend for sadaqa. فأمضيت مضى means you send it over to the hereafter. You send it over the bridge to the hereafter. That is what's remaining for you. Not what you saved. Not what you left in the bank. Not what you left to the inheritors. Nothing. Your, your money is used either you eat or you wear clothes with or you send the sadaqah and that is the only one that's remaining for you the word maqabr mentioned only one time in the quran and this is here in this surah uh, and again i want to uh, remind you that May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all healthy. The, the, the death is coming and very close to any human being. In, only in the last few weeks, I have lost three close friends, family members and close friends. Some of them were younger than me. Subhanallah, death is very close. And when we go to the graveyard, you realize it is, is that really the end? That's it. The guy has a, a, a full life in front of him and it's just in a few days, he's dead. So a great reminder for visiting al maqabr and getting the essence of where we all gonna be Ending our life or the al hayat the, dunya the, for us will end at that point. And from here, no more acts, no more good deeds required or bad deeds. It is what you offered previously. So that is coming very soon to everyone. Uh, just a reminder for all of us. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here. And it, Speaking about those people who have been engaged only in 
uh, in the stuff that was not useful for their hereafter till they reach to that stage. Hatta Zurtum al Maqabar, till you visited the graveyards, referring to the death. Kalla sawfa ta'lamu. Verily, you're going to know. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated that. Thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamu. Some of Mufassirin said that is for confirmation. Kalla sawfa ta'lamu, thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamu. Verily you will know, then verily you're going to know. Some of us would say that, oh no, one of them is for the, the disbelievers and some of the, 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 the first ayah is for the disbelievers and the one is for the believers. And the third one, which I really like, is that this is two distinct things. It is, as Imam Ali explains, he said, the first one is the one when you are on your deathbed. Sakaratul Maut. What what you will realize now, the people know their destination at that point when they are just on the deathbed. They know now. They get the knowledge now for what they are going to face. Then you will know in your graveyard another level of knowledge. And you will start to see that the al qabr imma rawda min riyad al jannah or hufra min hufra in iran. So it is going the 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 qabr is going to be the start point, either jannah or nar. Uh, so uh, that is uh, and, and 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 the mufassir that I was reading for uh, explaining about this, he say. Uh, uh, when when there is a repetition in Quran, they have what is called the difference between ta'sis and ta'kid. Ta'sis means you construct a new meaning, or ta'kid, which is confirming a one existing meaning. They say that in, in tafsir, when there is a, re- a repeating of a, a verse, ta'sis ma'nan jadid, or making a new meaning, as we are seeing here, kalla sawfa ta'lamun, thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamun, as uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu explained that this is two different things. It's not just a confirmation, but a ta'sis. Ta'sis means uh, making a new meaning, like it is adding a new meaning, not just confirming the, uh, the, uh, the same meaning that was mentioned in the first ayah. Kalla sawfa ta'lamun, you're gonna know in your deathbeds what you're gonna face. Thumma kalla, then, and that is also uh, another way for uh, for for showing us that the, the the meaning that they are two different meanings. Thumma means then. Tartib ala tarakhi in the Arabic means then later on. So that is not the the exact same thing. It's just not a copy, um, just to confirm. But you would know something on the deathbed, and you will start to feel it, know it more when you touch it. And that is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say here about al-yaqeen kalla law ta'lamun ilm al-yaqeen so don't you know when you know ilm al-yaqeen al-yaqeen in arabic uh, is is a, a confirmed knowledge a fact but it is used many times in 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 in, uh, in quran like ilm al-yaqeen ayn al-yaqeen what are the difference between these three? Ilm al it is you know something, you learn about it, you know, and you believe in it. That is Ilm al Ayn al when you come to see what you learn and you see it by your eyes, that is Ayn al Yaqeen. is. It is getting even more confirmed. You can touch it, physically get hold of it. That is haqqul yaqeen. They would explain that 
um, like if you speak about Kaaba, do we know if there is a Kaaba? Yes, we know. We pray to it every day. We have a strong belief. It is a fact that it is there. That is ilmul yaqeen. But if Allah open for us all and we go for Umrah or Hajj, inshallah, we go and we we'll see the Kaaba. That is Ayn al yaqeen. Ayn al yaqeen, you see the Kaaba. Now it is visual. You can see it. The fact become more visual to you. Haqq al yaqeen is that when you touch it, you get hold of it. You, 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 like you, now you cannot even belie your eyes. And you, that is Haqq al yaqeen. In the Quran, when the Yaqeen came also as a standalone word, sometimes means the death, because that is the strongest fact in any human being cannot, and any human being cannot really uh, dispute it. Everyone is going to die. Every living thing is going to die. Every human being going to die. And that's why it is one of the strong examples of Al Yaqeen. Kalla lo ta'alamun ilm al Yaqeen. So if you really know the, the knowledge of what we explained in the previous surahs, like Al-Qari'ah, that is, it is a fact. The hereafter is a fact. If you know it, ilm al if you know it as if you see it, before you go to the graveyard, it would have been efficient beneficial to you kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al yaqeen la tarawunna al jahim you would believe in it as if you are seeing it la tarawunna al jahim you would know and you will if you do not do that your in your life you will see you will see it ahlu nar will see the, the hellfire. You certainly gonna see it. Gonna see all what you hear about it, you will see it. It is going to be facts and it is going to be Aynul Yaqeen at that time. It's gonna be a visual fact for you. You will see it you will see it in a way that you cannot dispute it. Now you cannot say, oh, this is a messenger of Allah. No, he might not be a messenger of Allah. He might be somebody who is lying for us about the hellfire. But when you will come to the hereafter, you will see it yourself. You will really going to see it as a fact by your eyes. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ And that is the only verse here that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address everyone, not only kafirin, not only the people of the hellfire, but it is for everyone. Everyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask everyone about all the Naim, bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from health, safety, rizq, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives on us uh, will be asked if we give the enough thanks to Allah and enough hamd to Allah and enough worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to it, of course, we are not. We we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy. And I would like to, to mention uh, a hadith here. Uh, about Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He say, خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عند الظهيرة فوجد أبا بكر. In the middle of the day, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out and uh, he, he found Abu Bakr uh, close to the masjid. So he, uh, he, he told him, what make you come out in that very hot day? Um, and uh, he responded to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, 
what make me go out is what make you come out. Uh, so Umar ibn al-Khattab came and uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him the same thing uh, and they responded the same way uh, I came out for the same reason you come out they are just a polite way saying that they are so hungry both of them and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the same shoes they are Three of them were very hungry and thirst. They, were, they didn't save any food and drinks in their own houses. Um, so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, let's go to Manzil Ibn Tayhan Ibn Al-Haytham Al-Ansari. Let's go to one of Al-Ansar. Uh, they, they might host us uh, and uh, provide something and uh, uh, the uh, Ibn Tayhan Ibn Al-Haytham radiallahu anhu he came uh, and when he came to his house found the prophets and the, 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 the best of two friends with him uh, he offered them um, some dates and some water, and then he slaughtered uh, uh, a, a, a sheep for them. So they they eat and they, alhamdulillah, all become satisfied. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the end of the, the meal, he reminded Abu Bakr wa Umar, the two of the best of the mankind after the messengers and the prophets, Still, they needed a reminder from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What he did remind them, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Allah, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, you are going to be asked for what you consumed. This food that you eat, that you eat, Allah will ask you about them. Uh, a, a very clear message in this surah that we have uh, a time and uh, we have a health everyone has some bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remaining in our life we can use it for the sake of Allah there is no problem at all from having some recreation with the intention of just recharging energy for coming back to the real life for the real purpose, uh, not for the sake of uh, just killing time. And again, as the last verse said, we all gonna be asked about these bounties, about what we spend our life collecting either it's money wealth kids power knowledge everything we are going to be asked about them so that is the end of the surah uh, any questions